This is uh, an okay, the local news uh, channel had uh, a uh, report about this. It's only Norwegian, unfortunately, but hopefully you will get that uh, understanding. So, yeah, well, Skype is going to be a little bit more than a little bit of 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 a little Sutton or Gomle Mette or Tima, who stays on Yobbe Met Swans leader, so who's born on a year senor. Mesti city Tromsø, a Mette for school in Loxel. Ever see no man has uplevered Nalle for a shatter, for he at Pasetten and Tilly Murta, 
sett hjemme hos seg selv, eller er i sitt lokalmiljø, og de er trygg. Og de setter ikke et fremmed nå. Og fra midten av neste uke tilbyr barne- og ungdomspsykiatrisk avdeling ved UNN flere pasienter og behandling via skjerm. Målet er å gi de unge lettere tilgang på psykiske helsetjenester og få ned lange ventetider. Det kan gi hyppigere behandlingstimer og kortere reisevei. Vi vet at pasientene i distriktet har ofte veldig lange og noen ganger utfordrende reisevei, og vi får ikke sett dem så ofte som vi kanskje ønsker. Hvordan er det å møte dem på skjerm via nett? Første gang jeg var det jo litt rart, fordi man er jo vant til å lyse person til person, men jeg ser jo at man blir jo kjent med dem på samme måte. Her vinger. Takk, jeg tror spørsmålet vi skal se en halvt sius til morgen. Jeg har ikke tatt en bit about kind of the background and the technical solution and how it came to use Skype for Business and this tool that we use in Norway and how every healthcare worker in Norway Norway can use this clinically if they want to. This was introduced as kind of an administrative tool that every as kind of part of the deal we had with Microsoft that we get Word and we get Excel and as part of that we also got Skype for Business. Uh, and this is every uh, everybody is uh, employed in Northern Norway regional health authority or has no transport from uh, And this is everybody, it's the psychologist, it's the doctors, it's the administrative and the institute staff. And they can get it on their own PC. But first this was only for some kind of uh, administrative use and they could not use it clinically. But of course they wanted to use it clinically. So uh, then we, uh, we made or uh, it was made by uh, uh, a guideline for what to use it clinically. And this was based on the Mastermind project, another EU funded fund project, and the work we did there. Uh, and based on this, the, the guideline for use of uh, clinical use uh, was made in Tromsø. Uh, so if you are work at UNI in Tromsø, you can go on the internet and find, find the guidelines there. Uh, of course, it's was not made, uh, Skype Business was not made for clinical use. So before you had to use it, there was many things you had to think about. Uh, how we're going to re reduce the risk to, to not uh, be a danger to patient and have confidentiality. Uh, so Skype for Business is uh, approved for clinical use if you follow the guidelines. But you cannot just use any kind of uh, video consulta uh, consultation system for that. Or uh, any video system. You can't can use regular Skype, you can't use FaceTime. Uh, and most other things. There, there's an account solution you can use, but uh, there's limited what you can actually use in clinical use. Uh, also, Skype for Business has a chat functionality. Uh, we consider that the chat functionality on the same level of safety as, um, as an email, and you can send uh, uh, patient information in an email, so you have to, uh, you can use chat with the patient, and if the patient starts to chat with you, of course you have to read it, if you and says something important there, you cannot just ignore it, but you cannot uh, reply to chat either. So you have to do it uh, yeah, on Skype, or if that doesn't work, you have to pick up the phone. Uh, and it's not allowed to record the meetings either. This is something that many clinicians want to, want to do. They want to use it for regarding, for students, uh, to look at it, it, uh, it after. And they use other solutions now, and they want to record it, but they haven't gotten that far yet. That's something they hope to do before before the end of the project, it's, it's coming soon. And also, if, um, if one uh, user is on a Skype for Business on the PC and another has some tra traditional old school video conferencing system, uh, technically you can kind of call into a virtual room to, to get, uh, get the system to, uh, to talk to each other. But this is not allowed either because you don't have a kind of overview of who is in the, in the conversation and somebody else can call in without you knowing that they are there. Uh, and, um, and then, yeah, the patient information can get leaked to people who shouldn't know about it. Okay, we have made the user guidelines for both healthcare workers and the, and the patients. And since the, the patients in this project are young people, we thought that maybe a brochure wasn't the way to go, so instead we made we made the user guides, uh, or we made videos. Uh, and I'm going to show you one of them. 
video so we were made for patients. Again, it's only an original, so I want to forgive me, but I think it shows uh, how it, it works from the patient per per perspective. I tillegg til å møte behandleren din ansikt til ansikt, kan du bruke Skype. Det er ikke vanlig Skype som brukes, men en sikrere type Skype som heter Skype for Business. Du bestemmer selv om du vil bruke Skype med behandleren din, og du kan når som helst trekke deg fra avtalen om dere skal bruke Skype. Hvis du vil trekke deg, trenger du ikke fortelle grunnen til at du gjør det. De som snakker med deg har trøsthetsplikt, akkurat som en vanlig besøk med behandleren. Skype-samtalene blir skrevet inn i journalen din på samme måte som vanlige samtaler med behandleren din. Men selve samtalen er kryptert og blir ikke lagret hverken på internett eller noe annet sted. Det kan du være helt trygg på. Før møtet. Tenk deg litt om før du velger stedet du vil sitte under møtet. Under et Skype-møte er det best å sitte et sted du føler deg trygg, der ingen andre kan høre hva dere snakker om. Pass på at ingen kan komme inn helt plutselig. Kanskje du kan låse døren. Last ned Google Chrome på PC-en din og definer den som standard nettleser før møtet. Og lukk andre programmer på PC-en din mens møtet pågår. Da blir det høyere sikkerhet og bedre kvalitet. Ha med deg telefonen din i tilfelle det blir noen krøll med oppkobling. Du bør ha behandleren sitt telefonnummer og han eller hun bør ha ditt. Du bestemmer selv om du vil ha med deg noen andre på møtet. Det avtaler du i så fall med behandleren på forhånd eller i begynnelsen av møtet. Her kommer en teknisk guide til hvordan du kommer i gang med Skype-møtet. Først får du en møteinventasjon på e-post. Hvis du sier ja, legg den seg til i kalenderen din. Hvis ikke, blir den liggende i innboksen din. Uansett kan du koble deg til møtet fra både kalenderen din og innboksen din, så det er ingen fare. Det er lurt å få blitt satt i møte noen minutter før dere starter med samtalen. Juster volumet på høytalen på PC-en din. Er det for høyt, kan kanskje noen utenfor døra høre hva som blir satt. Du kan også bruke øretelefoner hvis du vil det. Hvis du har godtatt videomøter, så trykker du på avtalt dato og klokkeslett for møte i kalender. Deretter trykker du på bli med i Skype-møte. Hvis du velger å koble deg til videomøtet fra e-post, så trykker du på invitasjonslinken i selve e-posten. Deretter trykker du på Prøv nettet for Skype. Trykk på linken Plug in modul for Skype for Business Web App. Følg så instruksjonene på skjermen. Etter at Plug in modulen er installert, trykker du på Bli med på møtet. Så skriver du navnet ditt og trykker på Bli med på møtet. Da vil det dukke opp et svart skjermbilde som viser at du har bedt behandleren din om å bli med på samtalen. Skype-møtet starter straks behandleren din har godkjent forespørselen din. Når behandleren din har godkjent forespørselen, kan Skype-møtet starte. Trykk på kamera-knappen og så på start min video. Da er det krika. Ja, så det er neste video vi er med til din tur som det har vært til huset, enn om det er supposed to work at least. The clinic here in Tomsa has many different functions. There's an inpatient clinic there, or a public clinic, that covers Tomsa and the surrounding counties. But they also have some teams that cover all the different areas. Some of them cover all of northern Norway. I'm going to say a little bit more about some of the examples of use. One is the I've written, yeah, well, yeah, the old, old patient uh, clinic that let the patient in and uh, talk to them. Um, they call, as I said, they cover Tromsø and the nearby municipalities, but uh, even for the nearby municipalities, it can be quite a long time of time. Some of them have maybe over two hours to travel distance, um, uh, and, and so you need to take, uh, take a ferry uh, to get from one of the islands of Tromsø, and it can take a lot of time, both for, for the patient and, and the parents if they are following the at the child. Uh, so we, uh, we want to use this uh, video. Uh, they can use it from their home or they can use it from the school or a uh, healthcare station in the municipality and save travel time. Uh, and that's something that we've been doing. Also, we have an OCD team for obsessive and disorder. 
uh, that uh, covers all of northern Norway. They have uh, this kind of metal that they use to treat them, so they, are the, they, have, they cover the whole northern Norway. And of course, they don't, don't have the capacity to, tra to travel around th that long distances, and they uh, are, uh, are doing this on Skype instead, and are very happy with that. And they yeah, started with this before the project, so we don't take full, uh, <laughs> full credit for that, but we're very happy that we have been uh, involved in the project too. Um, another example of use is the Center for Eating Disorders. Uh, they follow patients at home. Uh, in, uh, when the, the patient is at home with their family and they want to observe uh, them during the meal, so then they can, yeah, they can connect it when they're eating and then can uh, have this conversation uh, when they are eating and observe how that, how that is. Unfortunately, the team for eating disorders are away, but uh, they can appear today, but uh, that's how they use it. Um, some of the experiences or some of the things we've been learning while we, while we have been implementing this. Uh, we have had um, the, the clinicians that have been part of the project group, so they have been involved in the development of the service. Uh, of, uh, so both for uh, guidance and comment on that, they have commented on the use the videos and how to use it and, uh, and things like that. And it's very, of course, very important to involve clinicians in, oh, in this. Also, we have focused a lot on the training material. You saw one of the videos here and we have made, made the training material also for the healthcare workers. Uh, patient confidentiality is, of course, always important. We have the guideline that says you should do it this way when you to uh, conserve patient confidentiality, but in addition to that, we did a risk assessment of the service just to, just to be sure, and yeah, we have a focus on that. Also, um, as I said in the in, no, all patient clinics, uh, the, the patient uh, come in and we need to cooperate with the municipalities, so we have made agreements with some of the surrounding municipalities to, so that they can, um, yeah, the patient can be uh, in the school and they uh, they can facilitate that from the municipalities. And of course, Skype business is not, in all days we had these traditional video conference group systems that were expensive and that uh, you kind of needed training to use. Uh, now you can install it in, in your own PC and many people use similar solutions as this uh, in the free time, so for most it's pretty easy to use. Um, and uh, the patients, at least for the inpatient clinic, they are informed about this uh, service and said that this is something you can get if you want it. But also the team is made harder because you cannot travel all the way there, so yeah. Okay, so the findings. Uh, we have been having when we are having this project. Uh, as as uh, Inge said in the TV, um, <laughs> Uh, on TV, uh, many patients actually feel more secure using Skype instead of going to the patient. I think many people assume for a long time that the best way to meet a patient is face-to-face -face in the therapist's office, but maybe for many patients it's better to sit at home and when they are secure and in their environment and where, where they feel safe. Uh, something that's maybe been a bit surprising to, for us, but many people still want to go for the physical meetings. Uh, so, we're not sure why actually, um, but they would prefer to maybe talk to Tulsa, maybe they like having, no one's speculating, so, but maybe they like having a day off from school and going to town and, uh, and uh, instead of being at school and going back to class, I don't know. Um, course, many therapists are very positive about using this, uh, others are maybe a bit more hesitant, so it's a bit mixed from um, there. Uh, technical problems, uh, ideally we shouldn't have any, but uh, we have had these uh, questionnaires so that the uh, healthcare workers have been filling out and we see there are still some technical problems and we've been talking to the people who use this and they also say that occasionally there is problems with the sound or the picture or things like that. So as we said in the training video, it's important that the healthcare worker and the patient have their phone number so they can call if it doesn't work at all. Uh, but in the, in the um, questionnaire for the healthcare workers, we also asked, we asked what, okay, uh, did you have a problem? And that happened fairly often, unfortunately. But we also asked, uh, were you able to do what you were supposed to do or what the goal was? 
and it's in very few days that I uh, were uh, able to do that at all. So uh, thankfully we, we can say that. Another finding that's maybe a bit surprising, but during the consultations, uh, you get uh, when you have it on video, you get to the kind of the point and the treatment faster than you do if you meet people face to face. Then you kind of have the small talk uh, first. Um, but now you get to the point faster and you start treating the patient uh, earlier. Okay, uh, a bit about uh, further work and what we are trying to do. Uh, when we came with that service, we kind of had an idea that uh, the patients could sit at home and have a uh, talk to the, to the healthcare worker at the outpatient clinic. Uh, but uh, when uh, the healthcare worker has this tool available to start finding other ways to use it that we never thought about. For example, to set about uh, observing the needs with the, with the patients. That's something I at least never, never thought of. But they see that, that they, this can be used in many different ways. And I think that's true for both well, psychiatric healthcare and more um, the, the somatic part of it. That if you, they get the tool, they will be, uh, and it, if it's easily available, they will easily see many different ways to, to use this. Uh, and another thing was the OCD team that they gave the patients the, the iPads so they can follow them when they do their homework or what you call it. Uh, and also something many people have said that uh, when you have, um, when you have the, um, the, uh, the possibility to, to just do a quick Skype meeting, you, you don't need to have one long meeting, 45 minutes, and then uh, see you then again next week. We can maybe have uh, half an hour earlier in the day, and then we follow up uh, 10 minutes later in the day. So it gives more kind of flexibility when you don't have a chart of time and you can do it much easier. And as I said already, we, uh, we want to, um, many want to record the consultations, and we are uh, still trying to get that to work. We uh, will get the risk analysis done and test it out. But, uh, so far, we are seeing that Skype mainly isn't the best. Uh, um, solution for recording uh, recording uh, consultations, but we are going to try it at least. Maybe there are some better, better solutions for that. And also, if you could use chat or email, if that had been illegal, it would maybe be a new thing, but right now in Skype at least you can do that. There are some other solutions, like uh, ones for, uh, for gambling or gaming problems that use a chat solution, but it's not something we have been doing this for. And all in all, this kind of has been a proof of concept, as you it, for, uh, for how this can be implemented. And now all healthcare workers in, um, in Northern Norway have this available, and they have been using it a lot that they have been trying to make them. Uh, I think they will really continue to, to use the solution. And, yeah. and I, I think uh, many projects, of course, have the problem that when the project ends, then nothing more happens, and it comes by itself. But I think this is so grown at it. Uh, and so many people want to use the population to have the workers of this work continue to, to be used. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Business been used for whole family uh, meetings, whole family assessments. I'm just wondering, how, is it difficult to work out what's going on in terms of the dynamics of family relationships with Skype? I'm not sure actually. Does anyone else know? Anyone else use that? We can answer. It's, it's just that. In, in, uh, uh, in the evening, for eating for the patients. But I'm not sure if it's uh, uh, the family is not sure. Uh, it's just that in practical terms, and you, you know, it's very difficult for a whole family to travel mm -hmm. long distances with <coughs> planes and ferries and so on. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, practical, in practical terms, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be attractive to be able to work with a whole family on Skype, but I'm just wondering if it's difficult. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, Frank, can you say anything We are in the process of... Um, we're analyzing uh, the material uh, because we have uh, actually recorded every every session 
and uh, this system um, uh, can be used for uh, for communication between specialists and a whole family group. And uh, we will do some some interviews now because then we get a better picture of what's going on and what are the the, 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 the pros of using it for, for different purposes, including uh, family counseling, and uh, what are the, the, uh, the obstacles to the use in that kind of purposes. But very interesting question, and I would like to follow it up in the, the following month uh, using uh, interviews. I met uh, the whole family in um, working in the OCT, OCT team and uh, it's a part of our uh, where we meet the child and we meet the whole family in, in, uh, under the assessment but, but also also, um, if it's the, fam the parents are very involved in the OCD, uh, we have to talk uh, much more with them. So it's, I think it's very okay. I, I'm, I'm, sometimes the parents are more skeptical to the side uh, than the child. Of course, they are not so used to it. But uh, I think it's, um, they are positive. Um, because it works. Of our healthcare systems with us. 
And we're also going to talk about a little bit more about the people that it's all about. Uh, let me tell you one thing. We have now visited all the countries uh, part of this project. And when we visited Inverness, we had, just like you did here in Norway, uh, you had somebody here from the ones that it's all about, the young people. And they were coming from an organization in Inverness uh, about talking about children's rights and health care, and they shared with us some problems with how they were met in the school system and also in the health care system. And afterward, we started talking, and they talked about all these problems. And then I wondered, but how about if you could dream up the great scenario on your dream come true? What would that look like? So, this is an unplanned study that just took place due to the young people's voices that day in Inverness. And we locked arms with uh, Emma Thomas, that is in charge of that organization, and she said, I'll help you. So what she did, she had a focus group in Scotland, and we, Eva and I, we, met, we had focus groups with young people in the northern part of Sweden. And there were 14 young people between 15 to 21 years old. And then in Scotland we had eight girls, two boys. In Sweden, five girls and one boy. And now uh, the next one, we are going to hear, no, first, you're gonna know the aim, <laughs> sorry. I got a little sass there. This is the aim of the study. To describe and understand how school can promote mental health and have a role in supporting early interventions for children and young people with emotional and mental health problems from their own perspectives. And just like Eva wrote in here, give voice to the ones that it's all about, the young people. Yes, and um, what we did uh, when we started these focus groups, we gave them two exercises. The first one was a dream exercise, and the other one the heart exercise. So we used flip charts and pens and asked them to tell us about and dream about what does a mentally health school look like. And we recorded their talk and we had some follow-up questions during their conversation. And we also wanted them to talk about what are the values, the ethos, culture and the feelings of a mentally health school. So this was the discussion during the focus groups and then we, we recorded all their talk and we transcribed it. Mm. Yeah. And we wanted them to dream big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they, they told us a lot of their own experiences of um, mental health issues also. So it's not just about the school, it's mm. a lot of, about themselves. Right, yeah. So we are going to listen to some of the young people, and that's quotes from the uh, interviews. One young person said, If they had been taken notice earlier, maybe I had been connected to the cat when I was 10 instead of when I was 15. I probably had come further than I have so far. I'm very angry with the school. I told the social workers and teachers several times, I don't want to live anymore. And they just, okay. To hear you're just a teenager, it hurts. To be confirmed is important and that no one accuses you for seeking confirmation. Because that's the worst thing, it's totally crushing you. If anyone has diabetes, okay, tell me if you get a little dizzy and make sure you get something to eat, or if you're lactose intolerant, okay, I won't serve you milk. But if someone suffers from depression or other mental health problems, oh, what should I do? What if I'm doing something wrong and she jumps in front of a car? I had been crying and you could see that I wasn't feeling well. 
but my defense mechanism is so rude. And then she said, if that's your attitude, then I don't have to help you. And then she just left. That night I was admitted to psychiatric care. If someone says, I'm not feeling well, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a depression or thinking about committing suicide tomorrow, or if you just need a hug or someone to listen to you for 10 minutes, and then you can move on with your life. There should be someone there who takes time to actually listen to you, even if you don't take, even if they don't take you seriously. Like they actually want to do it and not just be part of the job. They're not just doing it to get paid. When I first went to a therapist, it was very important to me that they told me it's okay to have mental health issues. I accept you, but I won't accept that you keep suffering like this. The first time someone said, it's okay to not be okay, I started crying. I don't feel lonely. I have a whole army behind me, backing me up. They don't call me a liar. They listen to me and make me feel valuable. I, I wouldn't know these people without social media. Well, that was a few voices, a few extracts that we wanted you to listen to. We asked them to dream big, but as you can see, there's a lot of things they would like to say about what is today that is not positive. Uh, uh, Sebastian, he was trans transcribing these uh, interviews and got into this. And then after that, we sat us all down and we said, what are they, what are they talking about? And here are some uh, analyzing themes that we have come up with from these apps uh, transcriptions. Uh, they talk about being safe, inclusive, and in a well-informed space. They would like to meet people that they can feel uh, safe with. They want to meet adults who are available listening and taking actions. Uh, they also want to feel significant and wanting to be significant to others, being helped and being able to help others. And they also talk about being accepted and respected for who you are. And, and we continue talking about this, uh, just like the Finnish team, this is a something that we're right now analyzing, and we got this in. And, and you said something, uh, Sebastian, uh, when we talked about this last night. Uh, yeah, okay. this one. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, say. Well, uh, th th this was how we, this is one part of it, but you can also see it like, yeah, what we want is uh, a school that, that uh, is on their terms. Uh, that uh, the school today is not on the, on the young people's terms. Uh, they have to present their uh, mental health problems in a certain way, in a certain time, for the right people, or otherwise they won't get help. Yeah. Well, either way, we're going to continue, and when you push the button next time, you're going to see this big, like that. And that means we are going to write an article about this, and uh, so this is preliminary results that we're working on. So we'll get back with you with that <coughs> article. Yeah, we have also done a baseline survey in uh, Sweden, uh, and within this survey we had two open questions. And the first part you can read, that is the introduction to these open questions. And the questions are, uh, describe what your needs are to be able to provide support when meeting children and adolescents to promote their mental health. And describe how you think e-health could facilitate your work. And uh, concerning the needs, we did a content analysis of the open questions. and. This resulted in some categories and some categories, and you can see them. The first category 
uh, early to have an early contact with child and adolescent psychiatry was uh, a big need. They wanted rapid contact uh, for all professionals within primary health care. They wanted early consultations too. They wanted a specialist support for children, adolescents and also parents. And they wanted information about professional contact opportunities. They didn't have it. Uh, another category was uh, a need for professional supervision, education, reflection and development. And they wanted uh, increased supervision and a deeper education uh, than today. Uh, they also wanted tools to improve the dialogue with uh, the psychiatry and the, the CAP uh, and method support in e-health. They wanted uh, time for reflection together with colleagues so they could increase their uh, competence and discuss with each other. Uh, they wanted continued education in psychiatric care. They wanted also opportunities for coaching by the phone and opportunities to develop consultation and treatment to a deeper level. Uh, there was also a need uh, in uh, Norrbotten for increased uh, uh, number of professional staff, staff in this area uh, to have a child psychologist a social worker, a physician and a nurse in the team. It was not always the case. And particularly psychologists are needed at all healthcare centers. We don't have them uh, at all centers today. There was also a deep need for cooperation in the field, more network, more teamwork, more cooperation with a psych child psychologist. And also uh, needs of improved availability. Uh, that was also increased number of professionals, but also to reach out to different areas, all areas as Norrbotten is a large uh, area. They wanted uh, early dialogue, uh, shortened or no waiting lists, and also a lower threshold for care. And last, uh, it was a uh, need for prevention and health promotion on a national level, uh, having a national uh, method for early prevention and care and health promotion, uh, guidelines and frameworks uh, all over Sweden. Uh, so if we, if we sum up the needs and the possibilities that the professionals uh, expressed uh, when they answered these questions, we can, we can uh, say that uh, professionals uh, expect e-health solutions to uh, enable professional collaborations um, by uh, allowing easy access to uh, other professionals with other competencies. Uh, they expect e-health solutions to facilitate professional de development by uh, giving um, possibilities to continue education, giving easy access to new research findings, for example. Uh, and they also expect the e-health solutions to uh, increase the availability for patients uh, by, um, being, by allowing us to reach more patients, by allowing uh, shorter uh, travel times and more frequent uh, contact with professionals, um, for example. Back to you, Catherine. Yeah, and, and I don't know if you connected it. Did you hear when we shared what the young people said and what the professionals said? Did you connect it with what we have just heard? Some of these things they have tried in Finland, they have tried in Scotland, and they have tried in, in Norway. So we know a few things that we could continue with in our area. So that's very positive. And I would also like to say that, you know, with the readiness, sometimes the time is not right, uh, but we were able to, with our Norwegian colleagues, to present at the National Congress of uh, CAP in Sweden. And do you know what the whole theme was? 
The theme was the future for CAP services is in e-health. Yeah, did you, did you feel this feeling that we feel now? That we were in the right spot and we got on the train with you. Thank you for letting us be the, the last wagon on the train. And uh, what we would like to say is that we together, we have learned a lot from this project and you are hoping to continue. We're hoping to begin. And there's always people leading the way. And I think we need each other. Although we have different uh, systems in our different countries, but we do have a lot to learn from each other. So uh, now we're gonna count to three. You're gonna click the button and we're gonna say, one, two, three. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that just have uh, not done any of that, but we have checked the readiness. Any questions? It's lunchtime. Let's keep talking about these, these things over lunch. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's interesting. Um, you know, we've heard from all the four partners in ECAP. Um, <laughs> And it's time for lunch, as, as Katrina said. Um, after lunch, we're going to further explore how we use, or how we can use, technology in mental health services. But first, there is a private lunch set outside in, in the restaurant, and we'll meet here again at 1 o'clock. <laughs>